welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is the Wednesday episode, and today we're going to do, I'm, I'm going to share what my favorite things are uh, as far as crafting, as like knitting and crochet and notions and all that kind of thing. And so, but before we get started, I thought I would tell you a funny story that happened this week. Um, my husband, it has nothing to do with knitting or crocheting. Well, it sort of does. You'll, you'll get it in the end. I walked into our master bathroom the other night and went, there's this awful, awful smell like sour milk. And I'm thinking, what in the world is this odor? So Dave comes into the bathroom later on and says the same thing. He said, what is that awful odor in the bathroom? I was like, I don't know. So I'm going around the bathroom. I cleaned the entire bathroom. I took the shower curtain down thinking maybe it's gotten sour or mildewy or something. Wash the shower curtain. I stuck my head in the trash can because I thought maybe there was something stinky in the trash can. No smell there. I even went, and this is really disgusting, but I even went so far as to wash the little container that holds the toilet brush in it, thinking maybe that was where the odor was. I was sticking my head in the laundry baskets to see if I had smelled any kind of sour clothes or anything. I smelled underneath the vanities. Couldn't find it. Then I went over to wash my hands. Found it. If you remember, a couple weeks ago, I knitted a pair of socks. And I said how nice and thick and toasty they were. There's a couple of downfalls to thick and toasty, apparently, because even though I washed them, I washed them by hand, and then I just laid them out on the counter to dry. Normally that works perfectly fine, but this time apparently not, and they actually soured. The smell was my socks. Not the dirty feet that were in the socks, but the socks themselves, because the, the material, the fi fabric uh, that was created with the yarn just didn't dry because it was so dense. So note to self, next time I wash these socks, they need to go into the dryer because apparently they don't dry on their own very well. So that was our stinky sock story. Anyway, um, let's get started. Now, like I said, this is going to be a video about my favorite things. So the first things we're going to talk about are going to be crochet hooks. So I'm going to get the camera turned around so you can look straight down at what I'm showing you. My first thing are the crochet hooks. Now, this is the set that I have used for quite a while that I got off of eBay. And I talked a little bit about this um, on Saturday's video that these, uh, this set that I had, I think there's eight hooks with it, and it just has millimeters and they're just kind of pressed into it right here. Um, and you have to kind of look for it uh, where the, you know, where the, the pressing in is. And I mean, otherwise, they're your standard ergonomic um, crochet hook. I think the colors match the same as the clover. These were an off-brand, uh, like I said, that I got from eBay several years ago. Um, I have tried using the metal ones, and they're okay. Uh, the bigger metal ones do better with for me. I have tried using the wooden ones, and I just there's just not that much grip with them. And I just find that the depth of the hook here made it a little more difficult for me. And because I have tendonitis in this hand, actually right here in this wrist, um, if I have to, I just do better if I don't have to handle things tight like this and move my wrist. So um, I've also had carpal tunnel surgery in both hands. So I'm better with something a little bit bigger here on my hand because I don't hold my crochet hook like this. I hold my crochet hook like a pencil, and sometimes I actually hold it with to steady it with my hand out like this a little bit. So it does put a little strain on my thumb here. Uh, so this is my favorite type of crochet hook. Now I was on Amazon, and the links to everything I'm going to talk about are down in the page, down in the description box, and I actually divided it up by crochet hooks, knitting needles, and knitting and crochet notions, and favorite books. So this is the set that I got from Amazon. This was $9.97 when I bought this 
and there are 14 hooks in this set. They are all the ergonomic ones, and the thing I like about these is they do have the pressed sizing in here. You can't see it in the in the camera, but it shows the millimeter and it shows the letter size. But if you turn it over, they've actually put it in print right along here. Now this side is not like embossed or anything. It's just printed right on the handle. So the largest is a 10.0 and the smallest is a B, which is a 2.25. So they go all the way up. And if you compare them to the other one that I had, these are both the size um, six millimeter, which is a US uh, 10 or a J. All of that information is printed on this one. I mean, the colors are identical. It looks like uh, this newer set, the hook itself is a little bit longer. You can see here, because here they are lined up. Yeah, here they are lined up right against each other. So you can see there's a definite, probably about a quarter of an inch. They're about a quarter of an inch longer, which is not a bad thing. And um, I really, I like this set. I like the fact that it has the letter and the US size as well as the millimeter size because um, my other hooks didn't have that or they had the letter and not the millimeter size. And so this has both, which makes it really nice. So I am looking forward to using these. And that is my favorite first item. Now we're going to talk about my favorite knitting needle items. We'll start with DPNs, which are double pointed needles. You use these with socks or when you have any tight circumference, circumference like the top of a hat, um, you know, that type of thing. When you go in circular and it's for someplace tiny. The set that I have, I have some metal ones. Normally I am not a wooden needle lover. For the most part, I like metal hooks and I like metal needles. However, when you're dealing with double pointed needles, you've got stitches spread out all the way across. And if it's a metal needle, a lot of times the, the stitches can slide back and forth and or slide completely off the needle. Because these are wood, they have a little bit more grip to them. Um, so I just feel like it holds the stitches a little bit better. This set, um, these are five inch needles and double pointed needles come in packs of five. And the set that I have down in the listing uh, is just like this set where I forget how many came in it, but it wasn't just like one set. It was like a whole set. Uh, for a very reasonable price. These are bamboo and they have the millimeter size. They do not have the US size on them, I don't believe, the, but they do have the millimeter stamped into them. Like these are tiny needles, so it's really hard to see, but they are in there. Um, and these, these have never been out of the package. So these are four millimeters here. Um, so yeah, you get several packages in different sizes of of the double pointed needles and like I said they are in bamboo. So those are my favorite double pointed needles. Now the other needle that is more specialized that I like are these short corded needles. Now this is a 12 inch needle and this is especially good for this is a chowgu and they are metal. They do make them also in wood. Um, this is ideal for doing hats. It works nice for doing children's sleeves. Uh, they also, I use a sock, um, a sock needle is literally, I think it's six inches. It's even tinier than this. They make them in nine inch and yeah, nine inch, 12 inch and 16 inch. I have several different sizes of like, I do my sleeves, like when I do my sleeves on, those are, those are a little bit bigger than this. But this one, I have a set that are three different sizes. I have a six, seven, a US six, US seven, and a US eight um, that I use for doing hats. And it works perfect. They were given to me as a gift. 
uh, from one of you, actually. So thank you so much. I do use them like crazy every time I start a hat. Now, sometimes these needles, as you will notice, though, um, the smaller needles, whether they're sock or whether they are the sleeve or whether they are something like this for a hat, the tips are much shorter. You can see as compared to a regular knitting needle, they're like half the size, maybe even less. These look like they're about half, but sometimes they're even less than that. If they're sock needles, they're literally about two inches. Um, some people like it, some people don't. It is all dependent on what's comfortable for you. I like this over using double pointed needles. Um, so it's, you know, some people find that they're hard on their hands. I don't. I enjoy them. I think it's nice because you don't have to use the magic loop method. You don't have to keep scooching your yarn around to make it work. Um, you just keep working how you, how you would if you were doing something larger. So I just find that I'm faster with these. So these are different lengths of shorter cabled needles. Now we're going to get into circular. Now the first needles that I am going to show you, I'm not actually going to show you because I no longer have them. They were one of my favorites. They were Clover's Takumi. Uh, they're made by the familiar Clover brand, but they are bamboo interchangeable needles. They don't need a key. They just simply screw in the cords on them. And when I say cords, I mean this section. And they would screw together right here. And that set, um, I really... I did like, but again, I'm not a big wooden needle user. And when I got a, I upgraded to a better set of interchangeable needles, I actually passed that set down to my daughter because they had a house fire a year and a half ago and she lost all the knitting needles she had. So I passed those down to her. Uh, but they, if you like to use wooden needles, I did find that the cords on them were very flexible and they're fairly reasonably priced and um, they were very easy to use. They had nice joins. In other words, where the, where the cord, cord joins the needle, uh, it was a nice smooth join so things didn't get caught or anything on them. So those are my favorite wooden circular needles. Now I'm going to talk about a set of fixed circular needles. Now the set that's down in the description box, it is, I forget how many, how many knitting needles, I think it's 10. I think it's a set of 10. Um, these I got off of eBay years ago. Um, they probably still sell them over on eBay, but because I'm putting everything else through the Amazon, I just linked them all together. They're, re they're about the same price. Um, I just tended to think that if I listed them through Amazon, they might be a little bit more reliable. Um, anyway, these are cheap knitting needles. They honestly are but they are one of my favorites. Um, like I said, they come in about 10 sizes. I love the cords on these. They do not have memory on them. In other words, they're not going to try to coil up like this when you're trying to work. They, they have nice smooth joins here. They have a comfortable point. Um, I mean, of course, the smaller the needle, the point here it is at this end, but they're very, very comfortable to work with. They're a nice length. I think they are six, six or seven inches from, from where they join the cord to here. I think it's about six inches. They're just very, very comfortable. Um, I use these knitting needles for years. I have, I think, three or four sets of them um, because I just kept finding I was using the same size needles all the time, and it was so much cheaper just to buy an entire set than it was to buy one set of knitting needles. So they're very, very reasonably priced. Um, like I said, they are an absolute definite recommend. I have recommended them to other people. I love them. If I didn't have another interchangeable set, this is the set I used all the time until I got my Cadillac knitting needles. So now I will move on and tell you a little bit about those. These are what I call my Cadillac knitting needles because I didn't buy these. These were given to me as part of a um, affiliate program. And so these are Carbons. That's the name of the brand. It's Knitter's Pride. 
um, which is a very well-known brand. And carbons are because part of part of the actual tip is a carbonate steel. I think I think that's what carbon stands for. That's a guess there. I'm don't quote me on it, but here's the set. You can tell I've got a set that I'm use. I've got one of the sets of needles that I'm using right now. Now these are pricey. I'll be honest, they are pricey, but they are very very good quality, and you can feel it in your hands. You feel like you are using something that's balanced. Um, they are smooth. Uh, the joins here, you can see this is tipped here, and then this, I'm not sure if this is what the carbon is, that might be what this is, and then they have the steel tips, I'm not sure, but it's steel here too, and then they screw in, your cords screw in here, and then they have a little key, which isn't really a key at all, all it is is a thing that helps tighten them. Uh, I will say the only downside I've run across with these needles, if you don't screw them together really tight, I have had them unscrew on me. Um, but otherwise, they just have a nice feel in your hand. They have just enough of a weight to almost feel like they're balanced. So I am extremely pleased with this set. Um, I never expected to own a nice set of knitting needles like this. I was perfectly happy with the other pair that I just showed you. Um, the cords that go to this, the cords that go to this are also very flexible. When you buy um, one of their uh, sets. It includes several different sizes of cords and some joiners. So if you want to make a really long one, you can connect some of the cords together. So this one comes with, I think it's three or four different cords, and it comes in a nice box because this was apparently some kind of a gift box or limited edition or something like that. Um, but you can still get them. And they also, um, Knitter's Pride any of the Knitter's Pride cords fit any of the Knitter's Pride needles. So they do make different different types of cords, different sizes, things like that. They are all interchangeable. And um, yeah, this is, this is my baby. So uh, I really do like them. And other, like I said, the only problem I've had is if I don't tighten them tight enough, they do tend to untwist themselves somehow or other. But um, yeah, these are Knitter's Pride, and down in the description box, I included not just the Carbons, but I also included some other Knitter's Pride needles, because they do make some that are just plastic, they make some that are, um, you know, just different styles, different colors, things like that. They have wood ones and a good variety, and you, can, you don't need to buy the great big, more expensive one. They also have some that are smaller sets that um, have more smaller needles or larger needles, um, so yeah, they have, they have quite a variety out there and they're a well-known brand. So that is my favorite knitting needles. Now it's time to talk about notions. So notions can be used with knitting or crocheting. So I tried to choose things that could be used with both. So the first thing I'm going to start with are stitch markers. I don't like expensive stitch markers. I have some expensive stitch markers. Um, that have been given to me over the years or that I have made, but I'll be honest that sometimes cheap is the good thing, just like those one knitting needles that I told you I got off of eBay that were super cheap, but I absolutely love them. The first, this is, this is a non-removable marker, uh, so a crocheter is not going to use this, but a knitter would. All these are, let me hold this up so you can see it, all these are is a jump ring for jewelry making. And I like the ones that come in different colors because if I'm knitting a sweater and I want to see where certain parts of the pattern match, I might put two blue markers together, two yellow markers together, and so on. So I kind of know like two and the two ends might be red. So that way, as I go and knit across the pattern, I kind of know where I'm at just by looking at the color of the marker. Now, I did put a link to these down below. However, you can get these pretty much at any um, craft store like Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, um, Walmart probably, um, you know, any of those places. They, it is in the jewelry department and it is called a jump ring. And these are probably, 
not quite a half inch. And they come in a big bundle. I mean, you get quite a few of them at a time. So um, these are non-removable stitch marker. It is split. I mean, you can open this up slightly and bend it open like that. Um, but I imagine if you do that one too many times, it's going to break. So I just keep them closed. My other two favorite um, stitch markers are the removable variety. And this one is just the plastic ones. They're like super cheap. I like these and I actually use them quite a bit. I use them just like the jump ring I just showed you because they come in different colors. And so they work perfect for sweaters and things because I put different colors at different, different parts of the pattern. Now another little tip for using these too, and this would work with knitting or crocheting, when you are doing your sleeves and you have to have a certain number of decreases every certain rows, if you put a stitch marker at each decrease, you can hold your place in the pattern a whole lot easier, simply because it's easy to find. So um, yeah, so I, every time when I do sleeves, every time I do a decrease, I just slip one of these in there. And that way, if I lose where I'm at in the pattern, I just have to go and count back how many decreases I have. So just a little tip, but these are a favorite. The only downfall with these, I find sometimes when you go to slide them in the little catch here, sometimes they don't want to close all the way or they want to pop open if they've gotten a little bent. But otherwise, I think they're nice. My other cheap stitch marker is also removable. Now this one has a little starfish on it. This was given to me. But it's the little safety pin looking ones that have the, like a ball end. They almost look like a light bulb. If you were, I guess if you were holding them upside down, I'm holding it upside down, but there you go. You can maybe see it. I like these type of stitch markers. Uh, again, they are removable because they are just like a safety pin on the end. They're metal. Um, I like these if I'm doing something with really light yarn. Because if you put something with a little weight to it, it might pull the stitches. These things just weigh next to nothing. And so they are easy if you're doing stuff with lighter weight. I like them if I'm, if I'm working with something lighter, like lace weight or something. I really like to use these as my markers. Uh, just and, Or as my progress keeper because they don't have a whole lot of weight to them. And they're not going to pull my stitches. So those are my favorite stitch markers. Now we'll talk about my favorite scissors. My husband got these for me years ago. I, it's probably 10, 10 years ago or so, but I, I found that they are still being sold. They do come with a little cap that covers over the years. I have lost that. These things are super, super sharp. Uh, they are about four, between four and five inches. I mean, you can see it in comparison with my hand. They're larger than an embroidery scissors. Um, yeah, they're larger than embroidery scissors, but they're extremely sharp, which is why they give you a cap to put on them. And they also cut all the way to the tip. So I tend to use these when I am clipping thread, but I also use them when I'm sewing. If I have to rip out part of a seam, I use my seam ripper and this because like I said, it cuts all the way to the edge and they are extremely sharp. I don't use them for anything else. So they have stayed sharp for years. Um, but yeah, those are a favorite scissors. Another scissors that are my favorite, I used to have a pair, but I don't anymore, but you will see them down below in that little box. Um, and that is the type of scissors. They're basically blades with the handle on the blade and you just kind of squeeze them. I had a set that I, I think my grandmother gave me that were extremely sharp. They finally fell apart after years. Uh, so I don't have one of those to show you, but that one was a favorite. Now this is my needle gauge. Now I don't know if you can use this interchangeably with a crochet as a crochet gauge as well. I really don't know. Maybe I should test this theory. But anyway, um, you just slide your knitting needle through the little holes to find out what size of knitting needle you have. Now the nice thing with the, this is a Haya Haya, and it's a little sheet, which is why I bought it. Uh, they have a millimeter on one side, and then on the other side, they have the U.S. size. Uh, so that makes it nice. And if you do happen to buy this set of knitting needles, just a little word of warning. 
They come from China, so their sizing is slightly different, and it is not written anywhere on the needle itself what size needle it is. So you will need to double check before you use them. Um, that's the only downfall I've ever seen with these needles. But, um, you know, you just find which hole your needle fits in. Like this one is a US 8, which is a 5 millimeter. So you just, that's how you check it. Now I'm curious, I need to see if this really works the same with a crochet hook. Okay, this is a six and a half millimeter. Huh, okay, so apparently it is interchangeable. Who knew? I didn't know, because I have not ever had to use a a gauge for my crochet hook. Although I should, because some of my crochet hooks that are like this, I covered with polymer clay to try to make the handle bigger. Only problem is when I did that, I neglected to think about that the size is written here, and so I put the polymer clay all the way up, and then I could no longer tell the size of the needle. That could be a problem. So now I can, I know that this will work, so if this is a N, I think, was, which is a 10 millimeter? No. Yes, it's a 10 millimeter. So, um, yeah, so it does work interchangeably. So, so this is my favorite needle gauge, or hook gauge, apparently. Now I'm going to show you a scale. Now, I've had this scale for quite a few years. It converts to ounces, grams, and there's a couple other things it I forget what other ones it does, but ounces and grams, which is what you're going to use with knitting or crocheting. Now you may wonder what in the world do you use a scale for? Um, say you're working on that project and the pattern says you will need 10 grams more yarn to be able to finish this. Uh, you need to weigh that before you waste your time to make sure it's going to work. And if you are writing a pattern, it's always nice to know that the amount of yardage you think you've got really adds up to the amount of grams it should be. So I do use this quite often, especially when I am writing a pattern, um, but I have used it also when I am reading a pattern. When when I went to put some sleeve, I believe it was sleeves or a collar on, an out, on a sweater I was making one time, it was like, make sure to check your amount of yarn that is in reserve uh, before you get started. So you do run into it occasionally, and it's just battery operated, and I don't think I've ever changed the batteries in it, and I've had it for a couple years. So, um, yeah, handy little gadget. It's just a kitchen scale, so if you have a kitchen scale, the, it'll do the same thing. Um, so, yeah, so that's my favorite scale. Another favorite, which I could not find when I went to film this video, uh, I believe it's by Knitter's Pride as well. It is a magnetic charting board, and it is it folds up like a little notebook, and you can open it up and prop it up. Uh, you have little magnetic strips, and the board itself is magnetic, and you lay your pattern on it, and it just holds it open for you so it doesn't um, like fold over or anything. If you've got it, you'd have to use like a single sheet at a time. But I have found that very helpful. Um, I just don't know where I put it, so I haven't used it recently. That's something I need to try to locate because it is very handy. Now we're going to talk about knitting needle storage. Now, I had tried different ways of storing my circular needles. They do sell packages for, or cases for holding your knitting needles, your circular needles and all that. I have found this works the best. These are little plastic zipper pouches. They just like unzip like this. And these are five by eight. I went to the dollar store and got some metal rings that just unhook. And I have labeled my knitting needles, the size right here, just I just put a sticker on them. And all of my knitting needles that are that size are in here. No matter what length they are, I just put them all in there. Um, and you can see by looking at these, how many of these sets that I told you were some of my favorites are in here? I own those real cheap needles. I own like, like I said, about three or four sets of them. So um, 
yeah, I use this all the time. This is my favorite way of storing them. And I can add to it or subtract just by opening up the rings and adding another vinyl folder. So that's the way I like to store my circular needles. Now crochet hooks, again, something I can't show you because I just ordered this. Um, I ordered, a, it looks like a booklet and it unzips and it holds different crochet hooks. I had made myself like a jelly roll to put all my knitting, or my crochet hooks in, but I find that the ergonomic hooks take up a lot more space and when I roll them I ended up with a big bundle about this big, which was not really good. And so then I thought, well maybe I'll just stick all my crochet hooks in a, in a jar and just leave them like that. But then I can't see the sizes, so I am. I ordered this the other day. I'm waiting for it to come in. So when it does, I will give you a little review on it. Uh, but it looks like it's pretty handy. It folds up like a little notebook and it zips shut, and it's got a couple little like flaps inside that I can, I can stick my crochet hooks in. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Now I'm going to turn the camera around to show you the next two things. Now the next two things that I have are a ball winder, which is here, and, and a Swift. Okay, now there's expensive ones out there that I'm sure work much, much better than these do. But this has suited my purpose for several years. In fact, mine is broken because I've used it so much. Um, but what you do is when you get a hank of yarn, like your, your commercial skeins of yarn, like stuff like Red Heart, things like that, you're not going to do anything to it other than maybe roll it into a ball. Um, I guess you could put it onto one of these, but I never have. But if you get some of these yarns that are in hanks, you're going to want to put it onto a yarn winder. Now they do make expensive wood yarn winders and all this. This one... Is, this is the cheapest one I could find, and it's the one I have used. It has a crank at the top if you want to hand crank things, but it folds up like an umbrella. It's literally like an umbrella, and these are sort of like straws, but there's uh, wire running through them. So this just opens up just like an umbrella and extends, and you put your yarn around here, and then it spins like this as it winds onto this. I think one of my videos years ago I showed doing this and probably got most of you seasick. But um, anyway, that is a yarn swift and this is a yarn winder. And this this does not do the real real big balls of yarn. It, it will do like a medium to large size, but you're not going to skein up something the size of like mandala or something. You know, it's not gonna it's not gonna roll into a ball like this. The balls are about about the size of a donut, but a, but about three or four inches tall. That is what will wind. They do make yarn winders that have a bigger base here um, and a little taller this direction, which means that you're going to be able to wind a bigger ball. But this has always suited my purpose, and like I said, it's it's cheap, but it does it does the job. You know, you can go up and spend much more, but I don't see the need of the cheap does the job. So anyway, those are those are my yarn winder and my swift. So I hope you have enjoyed my favorite things and I hopefully it didn't sound like an infomercial, but I've just never done one of these and then so I just because I just became an influencer for Amazon, I thought, well, this might be the ideal opportunity to kind of introduce you to my little storefront that I've set up over there, as well as some of the stuff that I like and why I like it. So I hope you have enjoyed this and found it helpful. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you again on Saturday. Bye, everybody.